Our lesson today is about air pressure and wind. Air pressure and wind are the driving forces of weather. Air pressure is simply the force being exerted on the earth by the atmosphere due to the mass or weight of the air at any given time and the gravitational pull. We need to understand that air pressure changes due to a change in the density of the air. Less dense air exerts less force on the earth and so that would be considered low pressure and high density air would, which is heavier, would place more uh, weight or force on the earth and that would be high pressure. Now, we need to go back and remember the different ways that uh, energy is transferred. And energy comes from the sun to the earth and it heats the earth up. The earth, that is radiation, or radi well, it, it's radiation, and the heat, the, the earth is, is heated through radiation, or radiant energy. And as the earth heats, the air in contact with the earth is heated up through conduction. And as the air warms, it becomes less dense. The particles or uh, molecules of, in our atmosphere or in the air that's being warmed become less dense. And that less dense material rises. Of course, now we're talking about convection. Remember, convection is the movement in a fluid. And so the warm air rises and the cooler air that is aloft is more dense and so it sinks in to take its place. And the warm air is lower pressure and the cold or cooler air aloft is higher pressure and it's again sinking in to take the place and this continues on as this cool air warms at the surface, it will rise, and the warmer air that's now aloft cools off, and it sinks. And this is convection, and this convection will create wind patterns as the air moves. On a weather map, we will see areas of high pressure and of low pressure. And they will be marked with a, a H, capital H for high, and a capital L for low. In a high pressure system, the air, remember, warmer air is rising. And so this cooler air at the, at the aloft is moving outward, and it moves out and away from the high pressure system in a clockwise fashion, in a clockwise motion, and it moves towards the center of the low pressure system. And as you see, it moves in a counterclockwise system or motion towards the low and in towards the middle. So air always moves from high pressure to low pressure. And from high, it moves outward in a clockwise motion and moves in towards a low pressure system in a counterclockwise system. A hurricane is a low pressure system and it moves in a counterclockwise motion. Now all of this, this movement of from high to low is due to convection in our atmosphere. We measure air pressure with an instrument called a barometer and the picture here is of a barometer. The units that are used, there are a number of units that are used to uh, measure air pressure. Generally speaking, today we use millibars. Uh, and you can see on here that 
960 millibars right here that's that's fairly low pressure and over to 1040 millibars which is uh, fairly high pressure again the pressure is due to the density in our atmosphere and notice on this barometer they have stormy and rain and they say change here if the barometer is falling then or the pressure is going down uh, we can look for rain or stormy weather if the barometer is rising we can look for fair weather generally clear skies and not much moisture the reason for that is is that as the air becomes less dense as it warms it leaves more room for water vapor and the more water vapor that there is uh, and the, the warm air rising with that water vapor the water vapor reaches to the upper atmosphere where it cools and condenses creating clouds and so as we have low pressure at the surface we are generally going to have cloudy skies and rain if the pressure is high that means there the, the uh, molecules in our atmosphere are closer together there's less room for water vapor and therefore uh, we have fewer clouds and a less chance of, of precipitation now as I explained air pressure uh, or the heating I should say of the of the earth heats the air and when the air is warmer it's low pressure and that air rises and that cooler air eventually sinks and this happens on a global scale and these global areas of high pressure and low pressure create global winds as we can see in the diagram at the top uh, at the equator we have generally low pressure because we have uh, the most heating on the earth so that heating of the earth heats the air the air rises and it moves both north and south and as it rises and cools eventually it sinks notice that it sinks around the area of 30 degrees north and, and south latitudes it's about where we live at about 30 degrees and this is generally, of course, this cooler air now is more high pressure areas. We also have uh, lower pressure areas around 60 degrees north and south. Again, this air is rising. Of course, the temperature at 60 degrees north and south is generally not anywhere close to the temperature at the equator, but still there is heating taking place and this air rises and it also moves both north and south as it rises it cools and sinks again and this convection that is taking place on a global scale creates winds on a global scale and as we can see in the diagram at the lower right it shows our global winds at the north Far north and south, we have the easterlies between 30 and 60 degrees latitude. Both north and south, we have the westerlies, winds generally moving from the west. And then between 0 and 30 degrees, we have what are known as the northeast and the southeast trade winds. Now, these global wind patterns are general and certainly can change on a local basis and so let's talk about local winds local winds are created the same way that global winds are created just on a smaller scale if you've ever visited the coast during the daytime uh, the sun 
heats the earth and of course it's also shining on the water but the water does not absorb heat as rapidly as the solid earth does so the even though the sea is absorbing heat it's not absorbing heat as rapidly so the temperature change in the in the water is less than the temperature change in the land so the land is heated up fairly rapidly it heats the air above it through conduction that air then begins to rise due to convection and as it rises the air over the water is cooler and so that air moves in to take its place creating what we know is a land breeze or a sea breeze moving from the sea to the land. Once the sun sets, then the opposite takes place. The earth cools off very rapidly. The water continues to have its uh, fairly steady temperature. And so at this point, the air over the water is warmed and the air over the land is cooler and so the air over the over the water begins to rise and it's it rises cools off and sinks over the land and we create a breeze moving from the land to the sea so you may if you think about visiting the coast at nighttime the air moves from the land to the sea and you have a breeze blowing offshore during the daytime we have air blowing from the or moving from the water towards the land and so we have the 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 wind switching from day and night from the land at night towards the sea and from the sea towards the land during the daytime. This is a local wind. And this happens uh, most frequently uh, on coastal areas, but local winds can, can happen in, in mountainous areas and in other places on the earth. So let's review quickly what we have learned today. Remember that air pressure is created by the, the weight of the air above the earth. The less dense air is going to have less weight, and so it will put less pressure on the earth, creating a low pressure. Cooler air will be more dense, hence it will have more weight, and create more pressure on the earth. We measure pressure with an instrument called a barometer, generally in millibars. The earth, the earth is, is heated from the sun through radiation, and then the earth conducts that heat back to the air. The air touching the earth is heated through conduction that warmer air rises and as it rises the cooler air from aloft moves in to take its place that's convection convection on a global scale creates global wind patterns and it also can create wind patterns that are very localized like along a coastline <laughs>